Happy uh, Wednesday, everybody. How are you, Tim? Uh, uh, good. I'm ready for warmer weather. I know that. What are you reading about? The Lions receiver Josh Reynolds signed two years with the Denver Broncos, $14 million. Everybody just thinks they'll automatically be back next fall. I mean, that's not always the case, whether you're that's right. it isn't a always Super Bowl winning team or not. You're going to go where you want to go. He was the Lions' third leaving receiver. They all say these guys are going to come back. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in the colleges. It doesn't work that way in any sport. It doesn't work that way in the NFL. It doesn't work that way in the high schools. True. I should ask you, is he a big loss? You tell me number eight. There he is. He's going to be wearing a Broncos uniform. So. Um, I mean, I think a big loss, no. They're trying to sign uh, St. Brown. That's who they want. That's who, that's who I'm more concerned He's about. He's more expensive. Well, why is he more expensive? He, the Reynolds, because uh, he can get it. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, what, 38 games with the Lions. He had two costly drops in the NFC loss to the San Francisco 49ers. Did that influence their decision? You know what I remember about him? That. So The loss, the drops? Yep. So I would say possibly it does. Okay. Guy catches 5,000 passes and drops too, and only anything people remember the two drops. Exactly. The jungle out there. That's how it happens. Uh, well, haven't been over here since Michigan State basketball in the tournament. What are your overall thoughts on the men's season now that it is officially over? Well, I never thought at the start of the year when they were the fourth ranked preseason team in the AP poll that they were that good and when they lost the very first home game to James Madison and they didn't have any freshman starters of what was reputed to be by some in the media is the next Fab Four or whatever, none of them started. I thought, uh-oh. Then they didn't beat Duke in Arizona. Um, they played them hard. But, uh, I mean, on the bottom line, I wasn't sure they were going to lose 15 games, but I did not think that they were going to be a factor in the Big Ten race. Um, and, you know, and, and they weren't. Uh, I mean, I think they had, uh, they, that senior group had lost 13 games three straight years and they didn't have Joey Hauser and none of the freshmen started. So from that standpoint, and, and North Carolina was playing in its backyard and they're, exactly. a, better, and they're a better team. I mean, that didn't mean State didn't play hard, didn't mean State couldn't upset them, it didn't mean State wasn't going to be close to them with a few minutes to go, but yeah, I mean, on the bottom line, it probably played out. Most people thought North Carolina would be in the regionals and not Michigan State, and that's the way it played out. No, no real surprise for me. Um, so I'm anxious to see where the roster is going to go now. Who leaves, who stays, who's added, who's not added. Portal add, no, yes, whatever. Because they need help if they're going to move up next year, my opinion. And a lot of people, especially towards the end of the season, some people in this room were saying, what is Tom Izzo going to do? What is MSU going to do with Tom Izzo? Do you, did you ever think that him being removed from MSU was ever a possibility? Is no, a possibility? but I'd tell him if it was my call, I'd remove him right now. If I could go over there and tell him that personally, I'd go tell him that right now. I mean... Anyone who suggests that is just simply is tremendously naive. There were a lot of Spartan fans that were saying it. Yeah, but and I was surprised. But they're fans. They're True. not they're not on the, the inside. Are they frustrated with four straight years of them, you know, not competing for the national title? Well, when you get spoiled like they've been spoiled for more than two decades and it you know, there's a pattern now where they're good, but not great. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that, you know, that comes with a territory. Ask John Calipari at Kentucky. He's got people all over him. And every year they go 30 and 3. But if they don't go further in the tournament than what they've gone, then everybody wants him on a silver platter. And how did Kentucky do in this uh, tournament? Well, they got beat by Oakland, right? <laughs> yeah. So, State didn't do that. No. Nope. So uh, It was pretty cool to see Oakland on a national stage. I mean, though. now what happens moving forward? The question is going to be two things. The returning players, do they get better in the offseason? And they all better. Uh, and then who do they add? I mean, who do they add? And, and, or who do they lose? And who do they add? So maybe that's three things. But that's the way it is every year. So 
not only were the men in the tournament, um, Michigan State women were as well. Also well, played, that didn't surprise me. Also played a very tough team. Well, a tougher team. They played North Carolina, who just got beat by 47 by South Carolina. So had State beat North Carolina and played South Carolina, Could have been do the math. Yeah. And they didn't win a game in a Big Ten tournament either. I mean, they were 20, what, 22 and nine, good for them. But, but, but as soon as they're like a lot, as soon as they played a team in their element, they lost. We've they been ever, saying that all year. When you they play never, in your they home didn't, arena. They didn't beat, yeah, they didn't, they didn't have any marquee, for the most part, they didn't have any marquee wins. So when they got to, the, I mean, they might have beat North Carolina, but then they got crushed by South Carolina. But the women's tournament, in my opinion, lacks credibility because the top 16 teams play two home games. 13 of the 16 won their two home games on their own floor, and now they go to the neutral site. See how many of those 13 keep going now that they have to go play away from home. And they do that financially because neutral sites in the first round of the women's tournament just don't have the fan appeal to sell tickets. Whether that ever changes or not, I don't know. What do so you I'm looking at, this is the women's bracket. Well, I'm um, in the right way. Here. Well, you're never in the way. And I'm in the yeah. way. Um, so compared to what we have in the, I have the men's too. Um, this you're, is the. Uh, I mean, they're all out. There's yeah. nobody around here. There's nobody around here left. So what? What do you think about the remaining teams in the tournament? For Which one? Both. We'll start with the men. Well, the women's is the a South women's. Carolina Invitational. Okay. I mean, it's just, I, I, I just don't see anybody beating South Carolina. Um, they're playing Indiana. Uh, the so. men's more complicated because I think there's so much parity all season in the men's tournament that of those 16 teams left, you know, I, I mean, I, pinning it down to just one. I think Connecticut's the best team, but I don't know if they're going to win four more games because everybody you play now is good and you're playing them on a neutral floor. Yeah. I mean, you can make that case for Houston, Purdue, Arizona, North Carolina, and then are there upstarts in there? Um, of the others that, you know, could win two, get to the final four. And at that point, you know, if I had to guess, I, I mean, I think, I think Connecticut plays Purdue if they, if they both win two games in the semifinal, yes. which would be a brutally tough game for both of them. Be interesting to watch, though. Well, Purdue got back, you know, Purdue in the last three years has lost to the 13, 15, and 16 seeds. So now they're past that. So now that... It, embarrassment is done and they're they they had a great draw when they played grambling in utah state i mean you could beat grambling in utah state but they beat them decisively too so look a lot of people around here rooting for purdue the big 10 hadn't won a national title in 24 years that was my next question you got two big 10 teams well left. illinois is good too yeah but i don't know if they can beat iowa state that game to me is an absolute toss-up absolute toss-up I mean, I think Purdue's going to beat Gonzaga. I think okay. they will. Uh, but Illinois and Iowa State, it, it just who, who, whose night is it for the one of them? Who, who, okay. who gets the break? Anybody that you feel is the Cinderella this year? Of the 16 left? That we have left up here. I well, feel like I we mean, had it's more hard to call year. any of them a Cinderella. I mean, North Carolina State's the 11th seed, but I don't see them going much further uh, if they go anywhere. I mean, I don't, I guess... You know, how do you define Cinderella? Cinderella is Oakland, but they're True. gone. All the, the, those types, the, you know, the, the lowest seeds, North Carolina State. So I guess by default, they're the Cinderella, even though they're capable of playing well. But they barely got by Oakland in overtime. And I, I, look, they've had their moment. I'd be surprised if they move further. In my opinion, the tournament starts now. You got With 52 pretenders out of there. All right, now you got 16 that know that they're. They're in, they're in the elite status. And this is a good group. It's like Well, you got all four one seeds in there. True. And that, that rarely <laughs> happens. And theoretically, you could get all four one seeds in Phoenix in the final four. Gosh, when's the last time that happened? So, uh, I, don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, and like I say, Connecticut impressed me the most. But that was then and this is now. And these, you know, they don't always play the same. They don't. So. Um. We're going to move on out of basketball, but still stick with Michigan State. And just because the basketball teams are done does not mean there is a lack of success in East Lansing. Uh, we have both the men's ice hockey and women's gymnastics won the Big Ten championships in their respective fields. Uh, what does this say with Coach Nightingale and this uh, 
season well, for Spartan Hockey. Well, he hopes that that look right there. That one right there? itself Sunday night <laughs> in St. Louis. That's what he's hoping for. Because what if it's against Michigan in another two game? Yep. Away from an arena, and it's the sixth game, and Michigan's come close four times and buried them once, but they're one and four. Are you going to see that scene Sunday night? I mean, you tell me. Hockey's are, that tournament, one and done. Yep. The best team never, hardly ever, wins a national title just because, I mean, you know, games are fluky. They're not two out of three or whatever. Could State win the whole thing? Sure. Could they lose the first game to Western Michigan? I think so. I don't know if they will. I'm kind of rooting for a little Michigan-Michigan State rematch. Sunday I night. would love that. I mean, that'd be... State doesn't want it. No. <laughs> it's rare that you root for North Dakota to win so you can play North Dakota, <laughs> but it's between Dakota and Michigan, and I think they'd rather play North Dakota the first time than six times with Michigan. The uh, Maryland Heights Regional, three out of the four teams are Michigan teams. Mm -hmm. So... And then another Michigan team is in the Rhode Island. Well, Michigan Tech's playing Boston College, yeah. and that would be an upset if they win that. Uh, so, I mean, there's only 16 teams now in each of them, hockey and basketball. You're getting closer and closer to the end. They hope they're doing that Sunday night. <laughs> and um, so they play Western Michigan Friday at 5 p.m. And then on the ESPNU. Women's gymnastics, an amazing season. Yes, it is. For this group. You know, think of where this sport was at Michigan State four or five years ago and where it is today. Uh, and the amazing thing is the head coach at State was hired off the previous coach's staff when she was fired with all this Nasser tie in. And the only reason he got the job, the only reason, was because they posted it, nobody wanted it. Really? Nobody wanted it out of the Nasser story. Nobody. Nobody across the country wanted Nobody to. Nobody wanted it. So they gave it to him by default. I'd say he's done pretty well. The whole program, I think, has done amazing. And I mean, they've got very good athletes. All I got to do is watch them. And look at the crowd that follows them. That's what I was saying. Like, I was going to take my niece, but they were, it was impossible to get tickets. Everybody loves a winner. Yeah. And I know that um, even just trying to find these highlights, I was having a very hard time getting it down. I'm surprised they're ranked as low as 12th in the nation. I would have thought the Big Ten champion, both the regular season and tournament, would be higher than 12. But I don't believe me. If you don't think I know anything about any of these other sports, <laughs> I know less about gymnastics. Well, I mean, you have the standard, you have the schools that always stick out, the Oklahomas, um, Louis, uh, Louisiana State, Florida. I mean, I had trouble doing that routine in phys ed in high school. Yeah, I mean, I just I saw you do trouble. it like two days ago. I had a little trouble getting through that routine. I got to see. <laughs> Uneven bars were not your thing? didn't stick it on the finish. Well, you got to stick the landing. You didn't stick the landing. So you got to do. Uh, so overall, what is next for Spartan Athletics? How do you uh, feel well, you got going two into regionals. I mean, you're, you know, you got them yeah. in, instead of basketball and basketball, you got them in hockey and gymnastics. If they Neither one of them, you know, has, has been prominent in some time. And both of them, you've got to be optimistic going into this weekend. It's too cold to talk about the spring. That's two spring teams are losing anyway, but they haven't been really at home very much because the weather's too cold. But hey, hockey and gymnastics, because uh, gym, what I don't know about gymnastics, when I see the scores 198 to 197, mm -hmm. is that a blowout win or did they eke by? Because I don't know how it works. Uh, depending, I would say depending on what events it was, it seems it would well, be But when close. they post the final score. Yeah, it'd be close. It's 198 to 190. Is that a blowout? It usually goes like three, three more in. I mean, I, 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 I mean, the point being, I don't know. I mean, I, it's pretty close. I mean, when I watch them perform, when I was a judge, I'd just go 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more thing, Tigers. Season opener is tomorrow in Chicago. Dress warmly. Um, but their home opener is next Friday, April 5th. Dress warmly. It's opening day in Michigan, of course. So um, Chicago tomorrow you know, against they got White a Sox. New, what is it? 15,000 square foot score oh video board gosh. that they're all, The one at Comerica Park that I last saw is the size of the Empire State Building. And now they're putting, as they say, a big one in. Yeah. What is we're gonna, that? We're going to get a big one What now. are you doing with the old one? I mean, uh, you know. I, I mean, I can, I can only imagine, but they're, you know, and then they say they've taken out all of the old time TVs out of the concourse and putting flat screens in there. Why they didn't have those in that park to begin with. I never knew because I never. The park's not very old. They should have had that. 
anyway, there are changes there. The video is going to be better. So. All right. But four weeks from tomorrow is the NFL draft there. All right. That's all you got. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right.